Welcome to AutoSense, the world's leading community for ADAS and autonomous vehicle technology development. We create best-in-class events, training, and information for the purpose of connecting the global community of engineers, scientists, and other automotive industry experts. Today, we welcome Stephen Latree, Head of Artificial Intelligence Research at IMEC. And Stephen, welcome. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. Stephen, tell us more about IMEC and the work you're doing today in the automotive space. Yeah, so IMEC is a non-for-profit research uh, center uh, on semiconductors. We're actually world leading in that uh, domain. Um, and so we do research on, on semiconductors, but really go up to the application level as well. I think that really makes us unique. We have a unique infrastructure, uh, clean rooms to, to research uh, on, uh, on this. But at the same time, we also combine it really with specific applications towards verticals, automotive, but also life sciences, uh, smart mobility, and so and so on. So it's quite, quite broad. Specifically for automotive, um, we develop both sensors, um, radar, we, we are developing a, a LiDAR as well, um, or at least components to that, uh, to that end. We also go for, com for specific compute environments as well. So we have specific AI accelerators that, that, that work. And we try to really bring it together into concrete applications. Stephen, you have talked in the past about semiconductors, the importance of semiconductors driving the transformation of mobility. What do you mean by that? Share your thoughts there with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's it's clear that the automotive sector is, but indebted, intended a bit on a on a crossroad at this moment in time. Yeah, it's really undergoing a, a major transition, and I think semiconductors are really playing a crucial crucial role in this. Um, the way the reason why this is, is is I think it's mainly being driven by a number of disruptive forces. Say we have autonomous driving, where we also have connected vehicles, but also the electrification and shared mobility. They're actually all changing the way we use the car, but also the way the car looks, both from the outside, but definitely also from the uh, from the inside. So how the internal car is 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 organized. I think so. There's a really a, a rapid growth at this moment in time of both software on the one hand and semiconductors, which go go hand in hand. Um, some studies predict that by 2030, about 20 percent of the total bill of materials of a premium car will actually be attributed to, to semiconductors. So if you see these, these disruptors, I think it's clear that the car is more and more being retaught as a kind of software defined vehicle and not just anymore as a, as a mechanical uh, piece of equipment anymore. Um, so I think the, the car of the future is really evolving towards a high performance computer on, on, on wheels. And um, traditionally we've been mainly um, tackling this uh, high performance computer on wheels uh, with, with general purpose uh, chipsets. But I think if you really want to reach those higher levels of, of automation, next level ADAS, but also just uh, SAE level four or five, um, I think we need to uh, bring the cost um, down and the scale up for these, uh, for these chipsets. So I think we need to depart a bit from traditional um, uh, compute architectures to really domain specific chipsets, ch domain specific architectures, specifically for the automotive uh, uh, industry as, uh, as well. So I think if you really want to accommodate for these disruptive forces and really make this cost effective, semiconductors will play a major role and there's going to be a need to build really spe special purpose uh, chipsets. Stephen, everything we're talking about here, software-defined cars, it's all so fascinating. Why do you see it as important or why is it critical rather that the complete automotive ecosystem join together then? And then further to that, how does that shape the semiconductor roadmap? Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's on the one hand, a matter of cost, and um, on the, the other hand, also just a matter of standardization for a large uh, part. So only if we can keep the, the costs under a certain level, I think the industry as a whole um, will be able to provide really a decent business model for ADAS or next level ADAS or really higher level um, SAE uh, levels as, a, as well. But I think we can only do this if we provide uh, really solutions at, at scale. Uh, scale will drive down the, the cost by, uh, by definition. But that will, in essence, also require collaboration and, standardiz and standardization across the entire um, ecosystem. So 
software semiconductors, they'll jointly really uh, steer that future end-to-end -end architecture. But what the exact architecture will will be for uh, automotive is still a very much you know, an ongoing question. And I think from a, um, an overall perspective, we need to answer that across the entire um, automotive uh, uh, ecosystem. And so there's a lot of variables in that end-to-end -end architecture that uh, can, can make a difference. So do we put all the intelligence, for example, in a centralized CCU? Or do you go to the other side of the spectrum where you really build very, very smart sensors? Or is it going to be a balance in between of all, uh, all, all, these, all these things? So I think the same thing can be asked also in terms of sensor modalities. Do we only go for camera? Do we go for camera, radar, LIDAR? Uh, so all these different questions pop um, up and we see different approaches right now at different cost levels across the, uh, the ecosystem. And so I really think we need to have to strongly collaborate to, to answer these, these questions. I think also overall, and the, the semiconductor industry will be evolving from those general purpose architectures, single die system on chips that I already talked about to, to more domain specific uh, solutions. Um, and also there, I think, so uh, in the semiconductor industry, there's a lot of uh, uh, work right now on, on chiplet architectures. Chiplet architectures allow you to build more um, heterogeneous components and modular comp components on a system on a chip and it allows you to make the the right chiplets or make sure that the right chiplet executes the right type of workload which often will be driven by by ai but again standardization and collaboration is going to be key to ensure that all these different modular components across the ecosystem will actually be able to to work to together so it's really a joint story of uh, collaboration to enable standardization as well when it comes to everything you've just said, Stephen, and this next question may be a, a little unfair because there's still so many questions as to, you know, how do we go, how do we sort everything? How does we go forward? But, you know, with standardization in mind, with collaboration in mind, where do you see the industry going, say, in the next decade? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that notion of a, a software defined vehicle is really key for me. Uh, so the last decades, the automotive industry has partly also due to electrification really changed or innovated on on that. But I think the next decade, and I'm probably a bit biased since I'm working on, on AI, I think it's really gonna be the, the, the domain of AI and sensing. I think AI and sensing will play a major role in, in the car of the of the future, even more than it does right, uh, right now. But it also comes with its challenges. Uh, from an application side, uh, we see that higher level of automation still requires more and more uh, top so uh, operations per uh, per second um, the machine learning world at this moment in time is talking about bigger and bigger uh, neural network uh, models everything that relates to uh, generative ai for example shows that we, we are able to get really good ai capabilities from a sensing and a control but it comes at the cost of building huge machine learning models um, but of course, in order to, to accommodate with these huge machine learning models, we need to get them still on the car it's, itself as, a, as well. And that is really going to be um, the, the, the challenge. We need to get huge AI models on a mobile unit with a, uh, with a limited power budget as, um, as well. And I think that will really transform the car of the future from focus on mechanics to a software defined vehicle um, first. Stephen, you're headed here uh, to the Motor City for AutoSense Detroit. Uh, what are some of the highlights uh, of the event for you? What will you be uh, showing and talking about for attendees? Yeah, so um, I think I hope we can show that um, at IMIC really have uh, that full stack innovation. So we really go from a specific um, um, new type of packaging uh, technologies to um, to specific sensing such as on-chip uh, LiDAR, um, but we also have quite some uh, solutions for, for example, to do in-cabin health sensing as, a, um, as well. And we couple that with um, AI, with chip technologies, with compute systems as, um, as well. And we also, have the, we also have the advantage for partners to uh, do ASIC prototyping and really do production at volume as, as well. So really a wide range of, of things that we are active in in the, uh, in the automotive industry. Um, I think we're pretty unique in that full stack um, approach, and we hope that this um, this new 
uh, innovations from silicon up to the packaging, up to the software actually, uh, is really uh, appreciated at, uh, at AutoSense. It's all very exciting, Stephen. From all of us here at AutoSense, I want to thank you for your time, sharing your expertise and your thought leadership with us. Of course, we look forward to seeing you in Detroit and getting caught up with you there. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you for being with us today, Stephen. Thanks a lot. Bye. For more in-depth interviews like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow AutoSense on LinkedIn. For more information on our world-class events, visit auto-sense.com. That's auto-sense.com. In Detroit, on behalf of AutoSense, I'm Carl Anthony.